Well gone sports fans, welcome back to another very special episode. I'm your host Joe Mar. I'm Rush. And this is This Earth at Sports TV, the place you guys come to get the best, most interesting and riveting sports topics, discussions and debates on the internet. Yes people, before we get into today's video, don't forget to like this one. Leave a comment under the video and subscribe to This Earth at Sports TV. The one more thing, please. Share the video to at least 10 people, but ensure to get us 6 subscribers because if each and every one of you guys can do that, you know how many subscribers that get us by the end of the day? Yes, yes, yes. People, and it's, it's an important time in our, in our football. You know, the World Cup is officially over. You know, so now we need to know where, where is the country's program going? Where is the reggae boys program going? And where is the reggae girls program going? You know, so it's kind of like a revamp time. It's like a rebirth time. It's time to, you know, reshuffle the, the card and, and set out a plan for 2026. So what we're here to talk about is, do we trust this administration to take on that task? Um, should the people trust the administration? Should we give them another chance, in a sense? So, let, let's talk about it. And what are some reasons why we should or shouldn't give them another chance? What do you think? Um, well, are we talking about the administration? Are we talking about our Both plan for 2026? Um, well, why, why? You know, the question is a bit convoluted, first of all. Um, the administration, mm -hmm. what they do or do not do can definitely impact us going to the 2026 World Cup. However, what the players do mm -hmm. and do not do can also impact. And I think both things can go hand in hand or they can be mutually exclusive. So I think the players can go to the World Cup in spite of the administration. Yeah. And I think the administration can do so well that they give the players an extra push to go to the World Cup, if that makes any sense. But from the administrative standpoint, I believe that the, the, the steps being taken to handle JFF as a business and for business people to handle the business part and to allow the football people to handle the football part I can see that there's a, um, a distinct direction and a separation of, of, of the two. And in all the top FAs, you know, the England FAs, what I always um, make reference to, where we see them keep business business and the football football, I think our separation of both, our attempt to separate both at this current moment is a very promising sign. You know, the appointment of the new gen set and, you know, various delegations and committees yeah. assigned to handle the business, you know, in in addition to hiring competent football people, I think that's a good sign. So administratively, I definitely think we have initiated, you know, a good, a good program for the next four years. I definitely have to see how it how it progresses to this to the upcoming Gold Cup yeah. and honorary to see um, what to make of it. That's from the administrative standpoint. Yeah, and I agree with you from the administrative standpoint. And we're going to you know call a few of them by name in terms of the, the strides that they they've made. Um, but another, another reason I think that, you know, we should give them a chance or, or let's see where it goes is the appointment of the head coach. You know, you, you said the football in the football in aspect of it and hiring football people to do football. You know, I, I am impressed by the, by the appointment. I like the appointment. I am excited to see, you know, where, where this takes us. Yeah. You know, in the first friendly against Cameroon, uh, you know, we had a weakened team. They had a weakened team. Argentina yeah. was the first friend. Argentina, yeah. and then we played Cameroon. But that was the one that I was yeah. more so impressed. I expected us to lose that game. I can't, I can't safely say I expected us to lose against Cameroon. They are going to the World Cup. Um, we had a, I can call it a local team, mm -hmm. you know, with a few additions from America. Yeah. And I expected us to, to go out there and lose, and we drew that game. You know, by, by, so it, it took me by surprise. And I can say, when I, when I look at the overall statistics and how the game went, obviously statistics is not all, but when I look at it, we didn't get dominated. We were in the game and, and you, you could tell that the coach is trying to get something new going. You know, and, and the personnel, you know, what he is, what he's accomplished. You know, the, the, the fact that he's not, he can't be easily, you know, manipulated. You know, he, I'm sure he's someone that will come and, you know, say this is what I want. And if I don't get this, then I can't do my job and I leave. And that is something that I like. And I, I feel like we didn't get that from the former head coaches. Not to take a shot at anybody, but I feel like this gives us, us, an, us another dynamic, you know, to, to, to give us an extra boost, an extra step. Yeah. We are fully professional players. Let's get a coach that, that a coach at the highest level to be in charge of players that are playing at the highest level. So that is one thing that I can say really gives me a lot of optimism when we think about the next four years. You know, that, that, is, one, that is one thing that I think about. Let's talk about the players for a second. The team that we have. Should we give this this core of players a chance or should we just break it up and start again? There's no way we break up this core. Mm -hmm. um, our core includes the best goal goalkeeper um, that plays football on the western side of the world. In my opinion. Yeah. You know, um, Andre Blake. 
Yeah, there's shouts for Guillermo Ochoa, yeah. who plays in Mexico. There's also Everton, who plays, you know, for Brazil, their third string goalkeeper in South America. Mm -hmm. But I think, as it relates to goalkeepers who play in the Western Hemisphere, Andre Blake is the one of, if not the best goalkeeper that plays in the whole entire hemisphere. And that's something to harp or hats on, you know. He's going to be a captain going forward, a very solid player, and somebody that should continue to be in the core of players. Yeah. Then we have Damon Lowe, a perennial starter on mm -hmm. what is not a great MLS team right now, but will be a They're great MLS playoffs. team. Will be a great MLS team going forward, and Damon mm -hmm. Lowe is an instrumental part in what they do, another strong part of our core. Yep. Ethan Pinnock, mm -hmm. and I make no qualms about this, and I say this without inhibition, one of the best central defenders in the English Premier League, Ethan Pinnock, he plays for the Reggae Boys as well, another part of our core. You know, central we have the likes of Ravel Morrison, who was in demand, you know, brought from England to America by his head coach because he was just so highly touted and well yeah. rated. Likes of Leon Bailey, who is an up and coming forward, has the potential to be a top forward in the league. Um, in addition to some people who might be able to play for us, you know, mm -hmm. um, considering that they come on board within the next two years, mm -hmm. because as you said, you don't want anybody jumping on, jumping on right before World Cup qualifying and so on and so forth. We have the Gold Cup, and you know, I've heard that we will be in the Copa America in 2024. Mm -hmm. That's two competitions that I think dual nationals should come on board for right now to come and play this competition you know the likes of uh, uh mr holgate and uh, demar gray you know isaac hayden's name has been in and around the room and so on and so forth omar hutchinson De um so on and so forth so i think the talent that we possess the players that we have in our core yeah. players that potentially can play for us and peripheral players and you know, i didn't mention likes of about the leader jamal Lowe, who are still in and around the program are still very solid players i think this core of players is definitely one that we should give a chance you know i think it, based on the, the first squad that Hagrim called, he already identified it, the set of players that he's going to go with and the players that needed to be called from the last campaign, I think he has already done yeah, that. Yeah. So the players that he picked in Argentina going forward, I think that's the guys that those are the guys that he's going to rock with. Yeah. In addition to a few additions, definitely think the score of players is one that we can back and we should trust to do the job. Yeah, and, and one thing that you did, I don't know if you did it on purpose, but you, you called a few players' names, but you left off a few players that are usually in and around the team. Mm -hmm. I was speaking about some, some Lamar Walker, I was speaking yeah. about some Kaim Paris, not Kaim Paris. Yeah. You know, so, so most of the guys, Speedy and those guys yeah. that play in the USL, yes. you didn't call yeah. those guys' names. Yeah. And I would like to think that that was deliberate. You know, because yes, they are a part of the core right now, but if we are supposed to, you know, build for the future, if we're supposed to be thinking about calling the best Jamaican squad every single time the team is called up, those can't be the names that we're calling off the top of our heads. Mm -hmm. You know, so and and that is something that we have to mention. Yes, we have very good players, but we need to also have, you know, know what our core is. And if these guys are not in our core, what, what's the point of having them? Is it to give them experience? In that case, then a speedy would not qualify for that. Yeah. You know, is it, is it that they're next up and we need them to be in and around the squad so they, they can deliver for us, you know, in the next eight years? Then fine. You know, a lot of these guys wouldn't qualify. A core wouldn't qualify for that. Javan East wouldn't qualify for that. You understand? So... We need to be clear with what we want to do. And one thing I always wanted from the JFF is a vision. I wanted to know what are we going to do. You know, and they've made a, an active effort to come out on these platforms on YouTube and, and even on and Sportsmax and TV. And they come and they say, this is what we want to do in the next four years. This is what we want to do in the next eight years. You know, I remember earlier this year, we, we were spoken about a lot on our channel. What do we want from the JFF? And I always said, tell us what you are going to give us. You know, what are we doing with our football? How do we want to play? I want to hear our coach say, this is the, the, the type of football that Jamaica plays. I want to know that when Liam Bailey comes, I know what I'm getting from him. I want to know when Damien Lowe comes, am I going to see a lot of, you know, clearances or am I going to see Jamaica try to pass the ball? I want to know how we play. You know, I want to know if the, the JFF is involved with schoolboy football and, and with domestic football. I want to know what is going on in the country, you know, and in terms of the plans for the country. So I'm excited. I'm excited about the, about the football aspect in terms of the, the administrative aspect. Talk to me about that. What are some of the moves that they've made that you're excited about? Um, first and foremost, um, signing with signing with Adidas. Yeah, that's big time. You know, and I, I think Adidas is a big time brand <clears throat> that will provide that will provide us with with the marketing yeah. and commercial value that will push us into the future. That's definitely something that I've you know I've really enjoyed 
obviously administrative is um, signing a big time coach in our opinion Hell Grimson, that's something huge you know the hiring of a new gen sec who is a business mogul he's a professional ceo he's yeah, a professional yeah, yeah, leader yeah, yeah. Yeah. you know and hiring a professional leader and a professional businessman to run the jff as a business he's seen that he's brought vision and obviously a a polite ruthlessness to the jff that i think we needed you know to remove the nepotism to remove the bias and to just introduce proper business management and proper running of an organization that is at the very 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 core a business and I think those are some steps that we've made to improve the football on a whole. You know, I hated at it a while ago, and I'm going to mention it as a solid point right now. One thing they've done that I like is being more of a presence, being open to the public, being relatable, you know, speaking to the people. Don't speak over their heads, don't, don't appear to them like you're above them. But, you know, come on the Ryan NFCs, come on the this that sports TVs and talk to us. Yeah. You know, respond to the comments, that the, the concerns that the supporters have. Because I do believe that this plays a part in into the, the, the support that we're getting in, in the national stadium. We don't see people because they don't have a connection to the team. They don't have a conne connection to their FA or FF, you know, at this point. They don't feel like they're a part of Jamaican football. So when you come and talk to them, like I see Dalton Wint doing, like I see, not Dalton Wint, like I see Michael Ricketts yeah. doing, and I see Mr. Dennis Chung doing, and I see Rudolph Speed doing. Yeah, they're coming and they're talking about people have questions. They have, you know, a lot of things that they take flat for. They come and they disprove them. They come and they, you know, debunk them. I like to see that from them. You know, I hope that they can do that a bit more. I hope that, you know, the, the, the JFF can make an active effort to be, you know, to put the players in the spotlight a little bit more, you know. Yeah. Get them get them to speak to the public a bit more. And, you know, just get the, the public involved in our football. That's ultimately what I want to see. And I see them taking some steps in that direction, and I like that. So I have to mention it. Um, yeah, those are a few other reasons that we've said. You know, people, I hope that you like. The little reason, it's a quick one. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we spoke about, you know. Do you think that this is the most important point for the next four years right now? Um, I think the most important point for the next four years is <clears throat> every, every accomplishment that we've made mm. since falling out of the World Cup qualifiers. Mm. So I think hiring the new coach was the most important, most important, point, important that point. point and then the new general secretary most important point you know moving forward the leaders deal in january that will be big i mm -hmm. think that might prove to be the most important thing that has happened you know in the nation's league what if we call up a good squad and we go further we beat next game we have stick out we progress to the the um final the final two games in the nation's league in mm -hmm. the summertime will be the most important point so i think um everything that we've done so far is a building block to accomplish the next thing that we will do. Yeah. So I think it will continue to get more and more important until we secure qualification for 2026. We will secure qualification, people. The reggae boys will be there in America, in Mexico, in Canada, <laughs> wherever. They will be there and we will be there. This or that sports TV will be there. And if you guys want to see us there and bring in coverage and doing all of the good stuff at the World Cup in 2026, we're speaking it and I'll clip this and I'll bring it back in 2026. Support us. Mm -hmm. And a few ways that you can support us is to like this video. Leave a comment under the video and subscribe to this side of sports comments. TV. Leave a couple of comments, man. Oh, God, man. Tell us how you like the video. Tell us how you speak the facts. Can't say Jomara speak some facts. <laughs> you know, I'll fight him out. You see me? But if you like the video, man, do one more thing for you. So people are going to beat him for that. I say, yo, man. Because they're going to beat me for some of them then. So watch the continue, continue, continue. Yeah, so like, comment, share. Like, comment, and subscribe. And do one more thing. Share the video to at least 10 people to ensure to get us. Six subscribers because if each and every one of you guys can do that, you know how many subscribers that get us by the end of the day. Holy poly people, but for now, this was this side at Sports TV. I don't know. That is right. <laughs>